Welcome back to the deep dive. Today, we're diving into something a little different, something with the potential to really shake things up in the tech world, and that's uh, Hypertensor. And, you know, we're really going to look at why it might be a good investment opportunity for you. Yeah, yeah. Hypertensor is really interesting, especially when you compare it to, like, what came before it with Bittensore, yeah. you know? It's like they took this idea of a decentralized AI network and just kind of supercharged it. And for investors, that's that's a big deal. So we're talking about an upgrade then, not a completely new thing. Exactly. It's like, um, think of Bittensore as the first iPhone, right? Yeah. Innovative, sure, but limited. Hypertensor, that's the latest model, the one with all the bells and whistles. Okay, I like where you're going with this. Yeah. But before we go too far, could you give us a quick refresher on Bittensore? For those who might be tuning in for the first time, what was the big deal with it to begin with? Sure. So Bittensore was all about this network of like AI peers all collaborating and getting ranked uh, on a digital ledger. So everyone had skin in the game, so to speak. Yeah. It brought in this concept of uh, stake-weighted learning. Basically, the more you had staked, the more influence you had. They were also really ahead of the curve with their distillation process, letting you use models offline. But, and this is a big but, there was this underlying vulnerability. Bittenser was prone to manipulation, and ironically, it could become centralized. Which kind of defeats the purpose of a decentralized system, doesn't it? Yeah, for sure. That's where Hypertensor comes in. It's like they saw these issues and thought, okay, we can fix this, make it even better. All right, now you've got my attention. What did they change? How's Hypertensor different? Well, for starters, they brought in this idea of subnet democracy. Subnet democracy. That sounds interesting, but I'm not sure I get it. So imagine instead of having this like centralized authority calling all the shots, you've got these specialized subnets yeah. and the community gets to decide which ones get activated. Oh, so it's putting power back in the hands of the people, but for AI. Exactly. If you're a stakeholder, you know, you've got the platforms token, you get to propose and vote on new subnets. It's really shaking things up. Wow. That's a huge difference compared to Bittensore. But how do they make sure these subnets don't just become centralized again? That's where subnet consensus comes in. Remember how we were talking about Bittensore being open to manipulation? Well, Hypertensor basically ditches the old way of doing things and brings in this whole validation and attestation system. So like more checks and balances. Exactly. Think of it as like a security system, but for AI. Yeah. This makes it way harder for anyone to mess with the system. For investors, that's got to be a huge selling point. Yeah. What else does Hypertensor bring to the table? You know, let's talk about those real world benefits. Let's talk about subnet delegate staking. This is huge, especially if you're thinking about investing. Basically, you can see how much interest there is in a particular subnet. People put their tokens where they believe in, right? So more tokens equals more popularity, which usually means what it's more valuable. You got it. And here's the kicker. If a subnet isn't getting much attention, it might get removed automatically. Hold on. Hypertensor cleans up after itself. That's the idea. It's all about taking resources and putting them towards the projects that are really working. For investors, that's a good thing. It means the system is built for success. That's fascinating. It definitely sounds like they're addressing the issues that Bittenser had. But what about security? Is Hypertensor doing anything different there? I mean, especially with something as powerful as AI, security has got to be a top priority. Absolutely. They've got this system called Proof of Inference, or PI. It's kind of like having an auditor, you know, someone who checks every single step to make sure everything is as it should be. Wow. So, like, really thorough. They don't just check at the end, but throughout the whole process. Right. This makes it incredibly difficult for, let's say, someone with bad intentions to manipulate anything. For investors, that's huge. It means you can be more confident in the system. Transparency and accountability. That's what it's all about. So yeah. we've covered decentralization. We've got security. Anything else that Hypertensor has that Bittensor didn't. What should investors be really excited about? So we've talked a lot about the tech behind Hypertensor. But, you know, for our listeners who are thinking about investing, what's the bottom line? Why should they be excited? Well, imagine a future where AI isn't controlled by, you know, just a handful of big companies. A future where it's accessible to everyone. That's the potential here, and that's what makes Hypertensor so interesting from an investment standpoint. Okay, so we've got this incredible technology, this big vision for the future, but how does that translate into you know actual returns for investors? I think it comes down to how well Hypertensor addresses the 
let's call them growing pains that Vintner had, right? It's mm -hmm. about building a platform that's more robust, more decentralized, and ultimately more trustworthy. And trust is everything, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Especially when we're talking about well, really any investment, but especially something as new and complex as AI. Exactly. And that's where those mechanisms we talked about earlier, the subnet democracy, the consensus, even the delegate spaking, they all feed into that, into building that foundation of trust. It's like building a house. You need a solid foundation. And it sounds like hypertensor really focused on that. Yeah, it's a great analogy. And don't forget about the proof of inference. That's like having a constant security check, making sure everything is running smoothly. That's got to be reassuring for investors. Absolutely. But let's zoom out for a second. It's not just about security, is it? It's about this whole idea of a decentralized AI economy, something with the potential to I don't know, disrupt entire industries. That's exciting. And that's where the real opportunity lies. We're not talking about small incremental changes here. Hypertensor could fundamentally change how we interact with AI. Imagine a world where you don't need to be a tech giant to develop or deploy AI. So like democratizing AI. Exactly. Hypertensor opens the door for individuals, for startups, for smaller companies to get involved, to innovate. And for investors, that means more opportunities, more potential for big returns. It's like investing in the internet back in like the early 90s. You just knew things were going to be big, but you didn't know exactly how. I think that's a great comparison. Think about how the internet changed everything. Now imagine AI doing the same thing, but for healthcare, for finance, even for something like entertainment. That's the scale we're talking about. So huge potential for change, but also some big questions. For our listeners who are ready to, you know, take that next step to really start exploring hypertensor, where should they start? What are the best resources? The hypertensor white paper is a great place to begin. It lays everything out, the technology, the vision, really gives you a deep dive into how it all works. Consider it required reading for anyone serious about investing in hypertensor. But what about for the more, shall we say, hands-on learners? Are there communities, places where they can connect with others who are already involved with hypertensor? Oh, absolutely. The online communities dedicated to decentralized AI are really active right now. You'll find tons of discussions about hypertensor, people sharing their insights, their experiences, even their concerns. All about tapping into that collective knowledge, right? right? Learning from others who are already in the trenches. Exactly. And that's how you get a real feel for whether or not hypertensor is the right investment for ah. you. So we've painted a pretty optimistic picture so far. But let's be real. There are always challenges especially with something this new. What are some of the hurdles that Hypertensor might face? Things that investors should be aware of. So we've painted a pretty optimistic picture so far, but let's be real. There are always challenges, especially with something this new. What are some of the hurdles that Hypertensor might face? Things that investors should be aware of. Well, one of the biggest ones, I think, is scalability. I mean, if Hypertensor really takes off, if they get all these new users, can they handle it? Can the technology keep up? It's like that saying, be careful what you wish for. You want them to grow, but can they handle growing too fast? Yeah, exactly. That's something investors need to watch closely. How do they adapt as more and more people start using hypertensor? It's a make or break moment for a lot of promising technologies. Some can scale and some, well, they just can't. Exactly. And then there's the whole regulatory landscape, right? I mean, decentralized AI, this is still new territory and governments are still trying to figure out how to regulate it. So the rules of the game could change at any time, and that could have a big impact on hypertensor, couldn't it? Absolutely. And that's something investors need to consider. You know, how comfortable are they with that level of uncertainty? It's all about managing risk. Yeah. Are there any other potential challenges you're keeping an eye on? Well, one thing that's crucial for any decentralized platform is community engagement. Hypertensor needs developers. It needs users to really thrive. It's like they've built this amazing car. But someone still needs to drive it, right? Exactly. So investors need to ask themselves, is Hypertensor building that community? Are people excited about it? Are they using it? Because without that, the technology doesn't really matter, does it? It's a huge factor. It's not just about the tech. It's about the people using it. So it sounds like Hypertensor has huge potential, but it's not without its risks, which I think is true for any investment, really. Absolutely. It's about doing your research, understanding the technology, but also the potential challenges. There are never any guarantees, especially in a space like this. Well said. As always, we encourage everyone to do their own due diligence, talk to their financial advisors, all that good stuff. So as we wrap up our deep dive into Hypertensor, what's the key takeaway here? What do you want our listeners to remember? 
I think the big thing is that hypertensor represents a real step forward in decentralized AI. They're learning from the past, from platforms like Bittensore, and trying to build something better, more secure, more trustworthy. And that trust is essential, especially when you're talking about investing. Exactly. And with that focus on community, on transparency, I think hypertensor really has the potential to shake things up, to change how we think about AI. It's a journey into uncharted territory. But Hey, that's where the exciting stuff happens, right? Absolutely. It's a space to watch, that's for sure. It certainly is. Well, that's it for today's deep dive into the world of hypertensor. We hope this has given you a lot to think about, maybe even sparked your curiosity to go out and learn more. As always, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time for another deep dive.